So now in the last video we made this circuit with an NPN bipolar junction transistor. In uh, this video we're using the PNP bipolar junction transistor. Um, you'll see a lot of NPN bipolar junction transistor circuits out there and an important thing to realize you can make the same circuit with the PNP bipolar junction transistor just remember polarities are opposite when it comes to the PNP bipolar junction transistor versus the NPN bipolar junction transistor so closing the switch turns on the LED almost instantly right there but thanks to the capacitor and the transistor we have a period of time where the LED will fade off once I remove power from the switch. So now I turned off the power supply and uh, removed the alligator clips even from the rail. But main thing is we're not powering the board right now. That's a good thing to do when you're wiring up a circuit. We will begin with the bipolar junction transistor. So I gotta turn the lamp over there a bit in order to read the part numbers. Um, but I can't see this with my bare eyes, but if you need, uh, use a magnifier. And uh, there you can see 2N3906. Pretty straightforward right there. And since it's a bipolar junction transistor and the uh, part starts with 2N because there's other bipolar junction transistors and there's other parts that start with 2N that aren't bipolar junction transistors. But because of the combination, left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, right pin is the collector. So there you can see emitter goes to the positive supply, which I have up higher. So I'm going to wire it that way. Um, just keep things simple right there. So I uh, yeah, swiveled it uh, the flat side to the uh, left over there, making the emitter the top pin right there. And we're gonna grab the uh, 10K resistor just because that uh, kinda lines up nicely on the board right there. And that's going to limit the current mostly from the capacitor there, but also the switch when the switch is closed. And again, capacitor is going to be up higher than a lot of stuff, so might as well uh, wire it next. I'll uh, move this over. You may be able to see the uh, value on there. I think you can. Uh, 100 microfarad. Uh, right there. Yeah, that's good enough. Right there. So I was going to use the loop, but you don't really need to. Now, this is polarized. It's very important that you got the more negative side of the capacitor towards the more negative side of the circuit. The positive side towards more positive it's polarized so there's that gray band it's also a shorter lead if you haven't uh, trimmed it and uh, so I want to put the uh, short lead to where that resistor is I'm gonna put it uh, to the left there near the uh, supply rail so even now or we don't have a load yet let's add the load so I'm gonna swap the position of the resistor in the LED long lead the anode of the LED needs to be more positive Short lead, the cathode down there needs to be more negative in order for it to light up. So we're going to put the long lead headed towards the positive supply right there. And since we're going to be using a 5 volts, 220 ohm resistor with 5 volts across it should get uh, somewhere around about 13 milliamps of current. That goes to the negative supply right there. And uh, remember, the uh, PMP bipolar junction transistor is a high side switch. It's on the high side of the power when it's used as a switch. NPN bipolar junction transistor is the opposite. NPN bipolar junction transistor is a low side uh, switch. So something to be aware of. That's why there's the two of them. Sometimes you want a high side switch and sometimes you want a low side switch. So now I got the uh, switch down here headed uh, to ground when we close it. So the bottom two pins are always connected. This is one long row right now. And then two spots up, that's all the long row up there. When you close the switch, you press the button right there, all four of those uh, pins become connected. So it all becomes one connection right there. And um, we're gonna take the 100 ohm resistor, you know, somewhat low value, so that the capacitor charges almost instantly. And um, something was blocking my hand from uh, being able to insert it, but uh, there we go. So we can see that connection. So now, I think I wired this all up and properly. We have the power supply off. And uh, some recent videos, I was off a spot with uh, my wiring and the circuit didn't work once I applied uh, power. So I um, definitely want to make sure I check that before I cut this seat. Maybe I got uh, something wrong. And again, sometimes I test the circuit, it doesn't work because the power supply is off. Sometimes both, both of those cases happen. But yeah, there we go. LED is bright, um, but then when I release the switch, now we depend on that stored charge of the capacitor. 
to keep uh, current going. But as that stored charge goes down, the voltage of the capacitor goes down and thus there's less current. Um, it, the transistor is not a complete on off. It depends on how much current is going, in this case from emitter to base. So it has a gain. That's what I'm trying to say. So if the gain is 100, then if you got 0.1 milliamps of current going from emitter to base, then it would let about 10 milliamps of current flow through it. It's probably got a gain of uh, 200, maybe 300. It seems to go up a bit, uh, quite a bit, as the amount of current goes down. When you got higher currents, it doesn't seem to allow as many times amount of current to flow through, but still a high amount, be aware of that. And uh, each transistor has different uh, gain range. You gotta check the data sheet for specifics. But yeah, we probably got at least a 200 gain, 0.1 milliamps of current it's probably going to let about 20 milliamps of current flow through and uh, whatnot so it'll be whatever the uh, voltage of the capacitor is once we release the switch when we close the switch we'll have a 5 volt uh, difference but you lose about 0.6 volts uh, right there so uh, probably about a 4.4 volt difference plus we got uh, uh, the resistance in the way that will factor into that but in case we close that there you can see the charge path for the uh, capacitor when the switch is closed and also the transistor will turn on. We open the switch so that doesn't matter anymore. That's gone once the switch is open electrically. There you can see we got the positive supply um, of the uh, capacitor and the emitter connected together. So that is, uh, if you're going positive to negative, that is the uh, current path that uh, would, uh, or that'd be the negative side of the capacitor. So yeah, it would be positive going that way. If you're working positive to negative, conventional current. Of course, electrons are actually uh, coming out and uh, going in that direction. But uh, they used to think that, uh, or they assumed, I think, that uh, there was some current flow. They didn't know exactly what it was, so they just assumed it was probably headed from positive to negative. Later on, we learned about ele electrons that go negative to positive. But that's the path. Charge capacitor, this side's more negative, that side's more positive, that's the voltage difference across there that can push the current through the 10k resistor. So, in any case, uh, that's about it. I used a 100 ohm resistor down here just so that the capacitor charges uh, pretty quickly and also, um, you know, it doesn't really affect how much current flows uh, from the emitter to base because we got a 10k resistor. It has about 100 times the amount of uh, resistance as that uh, 100 ohm resistor right there. So it's going to make very little difference from the emitter to uh, ground uh, current right there. And um, it will charge the capacitor pretty quick. We could get rid of it. We close the switch. That will instantly charge the capacitor. Again, about the same amount of current is going to go to emitter base. But you should really avoid doing, you know, short circuits. Instant charge of, you know, somewhat large capacitors right there. Um, so you know, better to add a little resistor right there. But for simplicity, often you might not see uh, a low uh, value resistor there but it's still a good idea to add it so in any case went over a lot of extra details because I uh, intended this video for absolute beginners for the most part um, hopefully you already know uh, what all these components are and and everything limiting current with the resistor lighting and LED and all that how transistors work and stuff how capacitors store charge before you watch this but a lot of people don't they watch uh, you know more advanced circuits uh, early on for uh, some reason. I was like that too. I just wanted to learn about the advanced circuits. But uh, they don't really make sense until you understand every single uh, other fragment here. So the resistor limiting current is a fragment. You add an LED, that's a fragment, transistor switch, and so on. Each part is a, you know, a different fragment that you combine together to make more complex circuits. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. And check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.